Hello everyone, and welcome back to DMG. This used to be the bread and butter of my channel, sitting on my dorm room floor, showing you something cool I grabbed out of e-waste. And that is exactly what I'm going to be doing today, just as I was three or four years ago. But today, it's not a dusty old computer that I picked up. It is a dusty old switch. But not just any Ethernet switch. This is actually a really nice enterprise grade Tin 100. I date this maybe 20 ish years old, like 15 at the latest. Just look at this switch. Now, this is an HP Pro Curve, I think 20, yeah, 25, 24. That being, it has 24 ports and. And it has both fiber modules installed. So it does gigabit fiber transmit and receive on both of these, which is pretty crazy. This would have been many thousands of dollars new. Uh, and it's, it's a pretty good looking switch. Now I plugged it in, it lights up and it does work, but it is a, uh, it is a switch I have no clue how to use and there is pretty much no way to use it unless you are the administrator of the entire network, which I am not. So at this point in its life, there's not much it is still able to do that a $20 switch from Best Buy can't. And a $20 switch from Best Buy can actually do a lot more nowadays than this can. But I was thinking we'd take out these modules first and look at those. Now, I've worked on similar switches with bays in the front, and they should just be able to slide out from the, the front. Not sure if that was supposed to come all the way out. I'm pretty sure those aren't supposed to come all the way out. If anything, it probably just needs some additional force to separate it from the big, whoop, the big connector in there. Let me, oh, yeah, here we go. Now I bet these are the same card. Yeah. Sweet. <laughs> one's very dusty and one's very not. That's so strange. Why is one covered in dust and the other pristine? Does one of these have more shielding or something? That is so, so odd. <laughs> Was one of these added, like, a few years later than the other? My best guess would be, like, this switch... Let's say this switch was retired in 2018. This one has been in there since 2006, and this one has been in there since 2016, when they added another one to keep up with network demands, and then they just retired the switch two years later. Maybe this was pulled out of another unit and put into this one. Because, you know, IT departments, if they're still maintaining old hardware like this and don't want to upgrade, they take parts from other similar machines and put them in the one that is most critical. Instead of, you know, actually going on eBay and buying this card, they just take it from a unit they're not using. So my guess is that's what happened, and it got blown off with a can of compressed air, while this one didn't. Let's see, how do you come apart? I wonder if there's a name for that slot. Like, is that... What is that slot? Oh, it looks like on the side here, there are actually... Uh, the, that's how we take the top off. It has these screws on the side. All of the stuff I picked up from e-waste this time was extra dusty. I, I dug it out of a especially secluded corner. Oh god. This feels like a crime, just knowing how expensive this would have been new. I feel really bad doing this. No! Well... 
God damn it. Yeah, so that's what overzealous plastic snaps plus 20 year old worn out plastic gets you, I guess. Yeah, that is, that is a strong plastic snap. Now my hands are covered in, in that crap. You know, something makes me think that you aren't supposed to take that off. After I get this all taken apart, I'll show you what it looks like plugged in because it's actually quite pretty. The way the, uh, the lights flash, it does its auto self test and then it, it enters the mode where it wants me to configure it. And uh, that is at the point where I cannot do anything anymore since I am not a network administrator. Let me see what is inside. This plate is like a pound and a half. Oh, wow. Now that is beefy as heck. I was not expecting to see that much hardware in here. There's a lot inside this thing. Good lord. Let me... Yeah, these are the plastic snaps. So we've got a big processor in here that needs a lot of cooling and a completely ineffectual fan. The fan's like nowhere near the processor. Here's some RAM chips. It has three RAM chips on here. Are these, are those Broadcom? Yeah, these are Broadcom chips right here and those correspond to the actual ports. And now these massive chips here, I don't know what those do. But you know what I can do is look up a data sheet. Now we have an exposed power supply. Always be careful when working inside a device with an exposed power supply. It's never a good idea to touch them no matter how confident you are that you won't get hurt because you probably will. All right, I'm going to plug it in. Again, don't do what I'm doing, especially on a device with an exposed internal power supply it will not be pleasant to touch that. And trust me, I know. I just noticed that fan is a Nidec Beta 5, which is absolutely hilarious. If you've got like enterprise or server grade hardware in the mid to late 2000s, it's going to have a Nidec Beta 5 fan. And now is when it's doing the like test of all the ports and uh, you know, powering up, getting all configured. So here we can see it's executing its self test as I said. And those are the active ports. Normally those would flash when you've got activity on the network. LED mode select. There's a tiny button here that cycles through these other indicator lights. I'm not quite sure what it does though and what those different modes do. I don't think it actually changes any switch settings. I think it only messes with the LED lights and makes those look different. Okay, there we go. So here is our uh, very sturdy pins and again it's a lot like an AT power connector. When something gets dusty to the point where I can't read the names on the chips, maybe it's time for a little clean. And by a little clean, I mean a big clean. Oh, good lord. Now, big enterprise grade things like this often use just regular processors. Now, I don't mean like there's an Intel Core i5 under here. But, I mean, it's not as obscure of a chip as you may initially think. At least, that's my assumption. The RAID card in my workstation actually uses an 800 megahertz PowerPC processor as its CPU. And uh, a, a couple other LSI RAID cards I use, like SAS cards, also use PowerPC processors. So... <laughs> Under here, there may very well be a little Motorola CPU. 
Although PowerPC did die out in the consumer market, it, uh, it and other architectures are still alive and well in enterprise and have been for quite a while. ARM and RISC are other architectures that you don't see as much. Well, ARM you see like consumer processors of, but my point is they're prominent in the uh, industrial kind of hardware space. There are some ribbon cables to the, uh, probably the indicator, indicator, that's what I meant to say. That looks just like a serial port header. I wonder if it is. Is it labeled COM? Well, I can't, I can't read it because of the dust. No, it's labeled P8. Yeah, it's funny, these look like express card slots. Yeah, these look just like PCMCIA or express card slots. I'm assuming they took that protocol and just put a different connector on it. This is an LSI L64324C, it so appears. So this chip is literally custom made for an ethernet switch. It's a 388 pin surface mount uh, BGA chip and uh, it's actually capable of 20, 26 port switching. So that makes me think all of the hardware that these fiber modules need to do is on this card and they only somewhat interface with the rest of the board. And I don't think there is anything on the back except for SMD. Quick last note, this fiber module has a date code of January 18th, 2002. And let's see, what does the other one? Oh, it's exactly the same. So these were both made on January 18th, 2002. So this whole thing might actually be even older than I thought. Couldn't find any date codes on the board itself. But yeah, that's how old 10100 Ethernet is. There's not much else to say. This was a pretty intriguing teardown. It's rare that you get to see the inside of one of these big network switches. And these, are, these aren't things you just go out and buy to, to put in your room. These are, you know, what the IT department at work or the manager of your apartment complex has. And then this is hooked up to all the access points across the building. So you never actually see these in the wild unless you work in IT or uh, look on eBay. But that's gonna wrap it up for this video. Hope this was enjoyable. Thank you everyone for watching and hope to see you next time. <laughs>